Yeah, and, and that's exactly what we're talking with the industry about, is to try and make sure that, that as this moves forward, because it is a change in policy. Yes. And, and I'm really uh, uh, pleased that we are moving forward with that, and I know that as a committee it had the discussions about it. But it, it's, uh, it's important that we do it in a way that's fair, and since we haven't had a policy related to that in the past, as we roll it out, we want to make sure that, that we do it appropriately and in a time-sensitive manner and do it with the appropriate uh, time frame involved in it. So that will be the further discussions that we're having. So thank you. Well, thank you. I will uh, lay off today and hope that when it returns to on concurrence that that amendment will be taken. Very good. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Would you like Res to close, Senator? Respectfully, yes, and I vote, Madam President. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Roll call, please. Allen. I Anderson, no Bates, Bell, I Berryhill, Block, I Canella, De Leon, Fuller, no Gaines, Galjoni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, Hertzberg, I Hill, I Wesso, I Huff. No, Jackson. I, Lada. Leno. Leva. I, Lou. I, McGuire. I, Mendoza. Mitchell. I. I, Monning. I, Morlock. I, Morell. Wynn. Nilsson. Pan. I, Pavley. I, Roth. I, Runner. No, Stone. No, Vidak. No, Wykowski. Aye. Wolk. Wolk, aye. Call absent members. Bates. Berryhill. Canella. De Leon. Gaines. Hernandez. Aye. Lara. Leno. Mendoza. Aye. Morell. No. Wynn. Nielsen. Ayes 24, no 7, the measure passes. File item 142, Senate Bill 469. Senator Hill? Pass on file. File item 143, Senate Bill 478. <coughs> Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 478 by Senator Huff, an act relating to child abuse. Senator Huff. Thank you, Madam President. Members, SB 478 creates a five-year voluntary pilot program for up to 10 counties specified by the Department of Social Services and the County Welfare Directors Association. SB 478 would amend Penal Code Section 11166 to allow specified mandated reporters to make initial reports of non-urgent child abuse or neglect to the Child Protection Agency through a thorough, detailed, and comprehensive online report. The Child Protective Hotline and Emergency Response System that sends social workers to investigate allegations of abuse and neglect is the first touch point between the public and the county agency responsible for ensuring the safety of thousands of vulnerable children. LA County is the largest in the state with 2.4 million children and youth between the ages of 0 and 20 years. Currently, the Department of Child and Family Services, DCFS, employs 7,500 workers, 32 of which are children's social workers. According to the DCFS current budget report, over 214,000 calls were made to the Child Protective Hotline last year. While the Department of Child and Family Services has made great improvements to call wait times on the telephonic system, historically some years have seen tremendous spikes in the amount of calls placed. 1998 was the worst year in which some peak hour waits lasted anywhere from 45 minutes to four hours. Every possible resource is given to ensure that any hotline calls are investigated and the information is shared appropriately with law enforcement and child advocates. Yet it's clear that child abuse and neglect cases go up with the poverty and unemployment rates. Due to its sheer size, the workload for LA County social workers can be incredibly daunting at critical times when resources become strained. Nine states, Arizona, Delaware, Florida, Kansas, Kentucky, Mississippi, Nevada, Tennessee and Texas currently operate online child abuse and neglect reporting systems. The reporting shows increased efficiencies within multiple jurisdictions. This pilot program is absolutely essential for the well-being of so many at-risk kids. By virtually eliminating wait times, an online reporting system will increase efficiencies at every level of the non-emergency and emergency response services. SB 478 will be an excellent resource to help county social workers assess and respond to child abuse and neglect cases in a timely manner. 
Uh, SB 4 said 88 passed both Senate Public Safety and Appropriation unanimously. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, sir. Any discussion or debate on this item? Any discussion or debate? Any objection to the use of a unanimous roll call? Seeing none, I 37, no zero. The measure passes. We're going to go back to file item 142, Senate Bill 469. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 469 by Senator Hill, an act relating to professions and vocations. Senator Hill. Thank you, Madam President. Members, SB 469 extends the operation of the California State Athletic Commission for four years. The bill codifies the commission's authority to conduct drug testing and prohibits the administration or use of substances outlawed by the World Anti-Doping agency by professional fighters licensed by the commission. SB 469 also clarifies that the commission can conduct drug testing at any time during a fighter's period of licensure and authorizes the commission to assess a fine equal to 40 percent of the total purse for use of a prohibited substance. I ask for your I vote, members. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Senator Allen. I just want to uh, register my uh concern over the number of bills that Senator Hill has brought before us today and, uh, and voice my tepid support for this. So one. noted. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, is there any objection to the use of a unanimous roll call? Seeing none, I 37, no zero. The measure passes. File item 145, SB 548. Senator De Leon, pass. File item 146, Senate Bill 644, Senator Hancock. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 644 by Senator Hancock, an act relating to state employment. Senator Hancock. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, members, SB 644 is a bill to help individuals with dis developmental disabilities gain state employment by removing barriers in the current system. The existing limited examination and appointment program known as LEAP was established as an alternative to the traditional civil service examination process to assist in the hiring of individuals with disabilities. However, LEAP is often not effective because it relies on a written test to initially qualify candidates. Although many people with developmental disabilities can successfully be employed in jobs involving complex tasks and are excellent workers, they often need time and training to learn the job. As an alternative, SB 644 creates a process that requires successful completion of an internship with a state agency of at least 512 hours and certification by the agency that the employee has completed the internship and demonstrated the skills, knowledge, and abilities necessary to successfully perform the job. In essence, it's SB 644 sets up a performance-based exam. It does not guarantee employment, but the opportunity to learn the tasks and be considered. SB 644 has received bipartisan support. It has no opposition. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Is there d any discussion or debate on this measure? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Aye. Bates? Aye. Aye. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Aye. Aye. Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? Aye. Aye. De Leon? I Fuller, I Gaines, I Galgioni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I I Morning, I Morlock. Morell, I Win, I Nielsen, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Wolk, Wolk I. 
Call the absent members, please. Hernandez? Aye. aye. Morlock? Aye. aye. Roth? Aye. Roth, aye. Ayes 40, no 0. The measure passes. File item 147, Senate Bill 670. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 670 by Senator Jackson, an act relating to taxation to take effect immediately, tax levy. Senator Jackson. Thank you, Madam President and members. In 2011, due to the budget deficit, we allowed the employer child care tax credit to expire. However, now that our economy is on an upturn and because working families are in desperate need of child care, I'm carrying this bill to reestablish the employer child care tax credit for a period of five years beginning January 1, 2016 until January 1, 2021, which is compi comprised of two types of credits. The, the credit is composed of one that allows businesses to claim up to 30% of their cost for providing on-site childcare, and another is to claim up to 30% of the childcare startup costs. As our unemployment rate drops and more and more people find jobs, we also see an increase in the need for working families to find childcare. This measure is a necessary yet modest common sense measure that will revive a policy that is supportive of California's businesses to recruit and retain quality employees and will help to increase the availability of childcare that many low and middle incomes now need. By reestablishing this credit, we can help uphold the state's commitment to providing a supportive business environment and provide increased access to affordable childcare for working families. This bill is supported by both business, the Bay Area Council, and labor, AFSCME, and has received no, no votes. I would urge your strong I vote or your weak I vote. I would urge your I vote on this measure. Thank you. Is there any discussion or debate on this measure? Senator Wynn. Senator Wynn. Thank you, Madam President. I rise to support SB 670. I have been one of the biggest supporters of tax credit to help with the cost of child care for all families. So I want to thank my colleague um, for her support and for putting this bill forward. SB 670 is a great bill that addresses the current issues of accessibility and increases options for parents when searching for child care. This bill promotes employer participation by encouraging, encouraging them to invest in child care facilities at the place of business and participate in their employees' child care expenses, both of which benefit the employer and the employees, both are major factors in improving employee, productivity, morale, and attendance. And I'll tell you, from a personal experience, especially for families or mothers who breastfeed, it's great to be able to go downstairs to, to breastfeed your, chil your child and then go back upstairs to go work or to go next door to do so. Um, and so this young, and in, in addition, young professional today face high costs and a lack of access to quality, affordable childcare. One of the first things we need to do to address this issue is to start helping working middle class families find affordable childcare. We also need to ensure that young professional, professionals, especially women, who do not have to choose between being a mother or having a career simply because we, as a, as a state, we can't seem to get the cost and accessibility of childcare under control. So I again appreciate SB 670 to, in which it addresses access to childcare and removes some of the barriers that families are facing. I, I am also very appreciative of the fact that this bill provides incentives for employers to start childcare programs and also raises the percentage of dependent care credit that parents can receive. And I am hopeful for that in the future we can continue to work together to include middle class and working class in Californians in providing access to quality childcare. If I may, um, Senator um, Jackson, I would be honored if you would let me also be a co-author um, co on the bill as well. Thank you. Senator Gaines. Thank you, Madam President and members. I want to thank the author for bringing this uh, piece of legislation forward. Uh, I'm a small business owner myself, and over the years I've seen firsthand how families can struggle to afford quality childcare. It's stressful, 
It affects parents' ability to stay on the job and can make it difficult for them to advance in their careers. This bill will relieve some of those cost pressures and make it easier for working families to keep working, to keep building a better future while ensuring their kids are in a safe and nurturing environment. This is a great bill for employers, families, and children, and I urge your I vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, is there any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Seeing none, ayes 40, no zero, the measure passes. Colleagues, we're going to lift the call on file item 131, Senate Bill 261. Mr. Secretary, please re read. Please call the roll. Block. De Leon. Aye. Hueso. Lada. Aye. Aye. Leno. Aye. Aye. Morell. Nielsen. Pavley. Roth. Aye. Aye. Pavley. Pavley. I don't know. Wolk. Nielsen, no. Hertzberg. Hertzberg, we have his eye. Yes. Can you please call the absent members? Block, Hueso, Morell, Wolk. Ayes 21, noes 15, the measure passes. Members, again, out of file order, file item 144, Senate Bill 504. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 504 by Senator Lara, an act relating to court records. Senator Lara. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. SB 504, the Starting Over Strong Initiative, offers us a chance to improve economic opportunities for youth by removing the juvenile expungement fee. In California, we have youth who have served their time for minor misdemeanors and are now ready to turn their lives around and make an honest living. There is a system in place that allows juveniles to seal the record so that their mistakes as youth do not hinder their opportunity for, uh, to succeed. This system, however, comes at a price tag. Uh, adjudicated youth must pay $150 to petition the court to seal his or her records. This fee is an impediment for youth who may be, ineligible, who may be eligible uh, for expungement. These fines and fees are a barrier to sealing yet they, uh, they cannot afford to pay those fines unless they have a job first, uh, which is ironic. Current law prevents many youth eligible for expungement from securing housing and employment. SB 504 seeks to remedy this problem by removing the fee for youth under the age of 26. This bill will increase young people's ability to turn their lives around, which is the ultimate goal of our corrections and rehabilitation system. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, sir. Any discussion or debate on this item? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? No. Bates? No. Bell? Berryhill? No. Block? Aye. Canella? No. De Leon? Aye. Fuller? No. Gaines? No, Galgioni. Glazer. I Hall. I Hancock. I Hernandez. I Hertzberg. I Hill. I Wesso. I Huff. No, Jackson. Lada. Leno. I Leva. I Lou. I McGuire. I Mendoza. I Mitchell. I Monning. I Morlock, no Morell. Win, no Nielsen, no Pan. I Pavley, I Roth, 
I, Runner. Stone? No, Vidak? No, Wachowski? Wolk? Wolk, I? Call the absent members, please. Bell, I. Galjoni? I, Jackson? Lada? I. I. Morell? No, Runner? Wykowski? Aye. Aye. Ayes 25, noes 13, the measure passes. Back to file order, colleagues, file item 148, Senate Bill 685, Mr. McGuire. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 685 by Senator McGuire, an act relating to alcoholic beverage service. Senator McGuire. Thank you so much, Madam President, and good afternoon or good evening now. Good afternoon, members, and of course, to our esteemed president. Uh, Senate Bill 685 is a bipartisan proposal that will allow veteran service organizations to host any California veteran at any event hosted at a veterans hall or a building owned and operated by a veteran service organization. Currently, only bona fide members and their guests can attend events of veteran service organizations, severely limiting vet veteran service organizations' ability to outreach to California veterans and, frankly, reinvest into the facilities they run for California veterans. It's crucial that these organizations, which support those who have served, be allowed to open their doors to the roughly 2.2 million veterans who call California home. Veteran service organizations reach out to soldiers uh, discharged in California annually, which often results in a lifelong partnership. Uh, this is a bipartisan uh, bill, and I want to thank Senators Bates and Nielsen for being co-authors of the legislation. SB 685 is going to allow more veterans within California to participate in lifelong companionship that veteran service or organizations create and attach them to services. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion or debate on this measure? Any discussion or debate? See none, is there any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? 40. See none, ayes 40, no, zero, the measure passes. File item 149, Senate Bill 703, Senator Leno. Pass. File item 150, Senate Bill 773, Senator Allen. Not at his desk. File item 151, Senate Bill 795. Senator Hancock? Yes. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 795 by the Committee on Public Safety and Act Relating to Public Safety. Senator Hancock. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, members, SB 795 is the omnibus bill carried by the Senate Public Safety Committee. Every member of the committee has agreed to the provisions in the bill, which makes technical and corrective changes to various code sections relating to criminal justice law. I ask for your I vote. Any discussion or debate on the measure? Any discussion or debate? Any objection to the use of unanimous roll call? Seeing none, ayes 40, no zero, the measure passes. So colleagues, we're now going to go back through the file and we're going to begin with file item 136, Senate Bill 376, please read. Senate Bill 376 by Senator Lara, an act relating to public contracts. Senator Lara. Thank you, Madam President and members. We're all aware that the legislature has very little authority over the University of California and we're also very well aware that low-wage jobs create serious demands on the state general fund and on California's social safety net. SB 376 is my attempt to address both issues. This bill requires the University of California, when evaluating bids for contract work, to evaluate the total employee compensation package, including benefits such as health care, and ensure it does not undercut wages and benefits of existing university employees. The bill was amended in appropriations to refine the specific services and contracts the bill will apply to and to ensure that it did not inadvertently impact the hiring of workers with developmental disabilities. Unfortunately, we cannot require the UC to do what our community colleges or our CSUs do, uh, already do, which are restricted from subtracting out jobs 
performed by janitors, food service workers, groundkeepers, and maintenance workers, 90% of who are, who are women, immigrants, and people of color. The UC can and does, not, and does sub, subtract out those jobs in increasing numbers despite the fact that UC's own academic studies point out to that, that these practices result in workers being three times more likely to need state-funded welfare services of one kind or another. That study is uh, automatically no longer available. Uh, I find that quite ironically on the UC's website. SB 376 requires that businesses provide those subcontracted servers, services to si simply tell the UC that wages and benefits they provide their employees do not undercut the wages and benefits that UC pays its own employees for doing the same jobs. Those jobs, those, uh, those same tough, unseen, and often overlooked jobs, again, members done by mostly women, immigrants, and people of color. Members, our finest educational institution should not be engaged in the race to the bottom for pay and benefits for its workers. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Any discussion or debate on the measure? Any discussion or debate? Senator Leva. Thank you, Madam President. I've spent the last 20 years trying to get private companies like Walmart to do the right thing for their employees by providing better wages and affordable health care. Now, here I am on the Senate floor, and I want to make sure that the third largest, California's third largest employer, the University of California, does right by the decent, hardworking people who cook clean and maintain one of our greatest public institutions. This bill is good for the UC, it's good for California, and it's good for the decent, hardworking women and immigrant families struggling to reach the first tier of the ladder to a better life. I urge an I vote. Senator Huff. Thank you, Madam President. Members, does anybody appreciate the irony here? On the one hand, we want UC to keep their tuition costs down. <laughs> we want them to uh, have an affordable tuition rate for our kids. We want to restrict out-of-state students, keep more slots here. And then today with this action, we want to drive up the cost of the UCs, who, by the way, it may be good for them, according to one speaker, but they're opposing this, because it can drive up their costs. Their costs go up, they got to pass it on to the students. So on the one hand, we want low tuition rates. On the other hand, we try to dictate to them how they hire people. This is ill-conceived. Let them do their work. Let's vote no on this. Any further discussion or debate? Senator Pan. Senator Pan. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm in, I want to speak in favor of this bill. I think it's important that our state institutions, including the University of California, reflect our values. That's where our students are. That's uh, where our you know, faculty are. Um, I've seen uh, working at, as someone who was a former faculty member at UC, how important it is to be sure that the employees at UC who are doing uh, the work, who maintain the grounds, serve the food, who help serve, help the students in the library, uh, keep them safe in their dorms and in the classroom, they deserve to have uh, be, uh, to, to be able to uh, work with the university, to be sure that they have the appropriate uh, pay and benefits, and that the people who they may contract out with also, who are coming onto their campuses, uh, also deserve to have uh, those rights. So I, I am fully in favor of this bill, and I urge an I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Senator Lara, please close. Thank you, Madam President. The, the bill is simple. We're just trying to ensure that well, the most prestigious public school system, university system in the world, actually pay its employees living wages, uh, especially our most vulnerable employees, which again, members, are women, people of color, and immigrants. I respectfully ask for I vote.